Welcome to Electron Line. Starting with this video, we're going to see some examples where we need to find the direction of the friction forces. And the examples get a little, to be a little bit more complicated, so we need to be very careful to determine the direction of these friction forces and find all of them, because sometimes we don't even find all of them. So here we have a situation where we're pulling on block one with mass M1, and there's a second block sitting on top of M2, and there's a coefficient of friction between the two surfaces, between M1 and M2, and there's a different coefficient of friction between M1 and the surface here. Also notice that M2 is attached to the wall with a string or with a rope here, and there will be some tension on that rope. Now what we're trying to determine here is, first of all, all the friction forces on M1, all the friction forces on M2, the tension on the rope here, and the acceleration of M1 due to all the forces acting on it. We're not actually going to numerically calculate them, but we're simply going to come up with the equations determining those four items. And that's the hard part of it, is coming up with knowing what the friction forces are, knowing what the directions of them are, and so forth. All right, first of all, let's begin with saying that there's a force of gravity pulling down an M1. This is M1g, and there's a force of gravity pulling down an M2. M2g, like this. But notice the weight of M1 and M2 both are pushing down on the surface here. So the normal force pushing back between M1 and the surface here, the normal force, is going to be equal to the sum of M1g plus M2g because it's the total weight of both blocks that are pushing down onto the surface and the surface is pushing back this way. Then there's another force, a normal force, pushing back from the top of M1 against M2. That's this normal force right here. And so let's call this normal force N1 and let's call this normal force N2 and that is simply going to be equal to M2g because it's only pushing back against the weight of the second block. This normal force is pushing back against the weight of both blocks. And that is useful information to have when we're trying to find the friction forces. So let's find all the friction forces now acting on M1. Well, first of all, there's a friction force between those two surfaces. And since we're assuming that if there was no friction force at all, the block M1 would be moving to the right, the friction force will then have to act to the left. So we know there's going to be a friction force this way. Let's call this friction force 1, and that is going to be equal to the normal force times mu. In this case, that's N1 times mu1, because that's the coefficient of friction on these surfaces, and the normal force between these two surfaces is N1, and so this is going to be equal to the sum M1g plus M2g times mu sub 1, and that's the magnitude of friction force 1 between the surface and block M1. But that's not the only friction force on M1. There's also a friction force between these two surfaces, between M1 and M2. And what will be the direction of that force relative to M1? Well, again, since M1 is moving in this direction, if there was no friction at all, you know for sure that it would be moving in this direction due to the force. Therefore, there's a second friction force between these two surfaces in this direction. So let's call this force friction force 2. And that is going to be equal to N2 times mu2, because in this case, we have to take into account the coefficient of friction between those two surfaces and the normal force caused by the weight of M2. So this is therefore equal to M2g times mu sub 2. And therefore, and therefore, the total... And therefore, the total friction force on M1 is going to be the sum of these two. So we can say that force friction on M1 is going to be the sum of the two, force friction 1 plus force friction 2, which is going to be equal to M1g plus M2g times mu sub 1 plus M2g mu sub 2, uh, that's the second friction force. And so this is for part A, the total friction force on
object M1. Now we need to find the friction force on M2. So now it's relative to this block right here. Now this block, well, what's happened to this block? Well, this block is being pulled to the right because you're pulling an M1. How does that work? Well, notice that as you're pulling in this direction, there's going to be some friction force between those two, and that friction force will be pulling an M2 in this direction. M2 doesn't want to go anywhere. M2 wants to stay in place because it's attached to the wall by this rope. But by trying to pull on M1 in this direction, it's going to drag the surface of M1 against the surface of M2, and it's going to cause some friction force to be pushing in this direction. So let me use a different color. So this here, let's call this friction force 3, which is equal to, again, the normal force right here, which is N2 times mu sub 2, which in this case is M2G mu sub 2. Now what that is, is that is actually the force pushing on M2, trying to push it to the right. And then there's something holding M2 in place, which is the tension right here, holding M2 in place. If this wasn't there, this for force right here would simply cause the M2 to be moving to the right. So we can say here, that the friction force for part B, the friction force, force friction on M2 is equal to force friction 3, which is equal to M2G mu sub 2. And it turns out that the magnitude of this force right here, so let's call that force friction 3, because we have it right here. So the magnitude of this friction force is equal to the magnitude of this friction force. They're equal but opposite in direction. This is the friction force on M1. This is the friction force on M2. Next question for part C, we need to find the tension. Now notice that there's only two forces acting on M2. It's this friction force pulling to the right and T pulling to the left. And since it's not going anywhere, that means the tension T here must be equal to friction force 3 there. So tension is equal to force friction 3, which is equal to M2G times mu sub 2. And finally, now we're trying to find the acceleration of M1. So for part D, the acceleration is equal to the net force divided by the mass. The net force is all the forces aiding the acceleration minus all the forces opposing the acceleration. Of course, here we're assuming that these forces are greater than the opposing forces. If they weren't, then of course there's no acceleration. And then we divide it by the mass, in this case it will be the mass of M1. So the acceleration is equal to the forces aiding, which would be the force F here, F, minus this friction force, force friction 1, minus this friction force, which is force friction 2, divided by M1. And if we plug in what those are equal to, that's F minus force friction 1 is this force right here, M1G plus M2G times mu sub 1, and then minus friction force 2, which is M2G times mu sub 2, and the whole thing divided by M1. And that would be the acceleration of M1, provided that this force is bigger than those two forces combined. And that's how we find the friction forces in a case like this. It's a little bit more complicated, but if you're careful about it and you take each block at a time, you can find the friction forces. And that's how it's done.